Hello everyone! Welcome back to Brain Scratch Com's top five console startup sounds above PlayStation 1. Don't at me. Anyway, here is one of the launch titles for the original Game Boy Advance, and it might look a little bit familiar to anybody who had a Oh Super my Nintendo. god, is that Doki Doki Panic from the Nintendo Famicom? No, it's Doki Doki Literature Club. Yeah, the <laughs> Doki Doki Literature Club for the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... So like, yeah. What a okay. weird, what a weird game to start your new handheld on a, the a enhanced Super Nintendo port of Mario Two. Yeah, the enhanced port of the enhanced port of the advanced port. I would want to point yeah. out. So this yeah. is like yeah, some say. West Virginia levels of inbreeding going on here. <laughs> Do you guys want to play Mario Brothers? You can link up to four GBAs and play them all together I, at the same time. I apologize time. to any of our viewers who live in West Virginia. Um, I don't. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, okay. So Doki Doki Panic slash Mario 2 slash Mario USA. This is a game that my opinion has changed radically um, on for like like over the years because like like very early on I was I was really disdainful to this whole thing just because like just kind of as a knee jerk reaction to the idea that it was another game entirely that just got rebranded to Mario but you know that was just an early like first impression before I knew quite as much about gaming history as I do now. Um, now that I do know about gaming history, it actually makes a lot of sense, and I can understand the decision that was made at the time. Yeah. Doki Doki Panic is technically a licensed game. <laughs> oh God damn it! Yeah. <laughs> for what license? <laughs> for, it, it's for like a. I forget exactly, but it's like some event thing in Japan that they do. It's weird. <laughs> I thought it was like some manga or anime, but I, it's I, funny though because like even after learning of the the true story behind Mario Brothers Two USA. It really changed like my, my perspective and my opinion on the game itself because even then, like, because I, I, my my earliest memories of this game go way fucking back. I'm talking like NES. when I was five, six years old. Yeah, very faint memories of playing this game like over at my dad's house uh, for a time, and I thought it was a little strange like going from Mario Brothers One to this because like because the gameplay is they're, kind they're of not, different. They're not the same at all. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, you run and you two jump, platform but... and you run and you jump. You just pick up shit and you throw stuff, you know. And that was about it. But then, like learning, like later down the road, oh, I was like, because then it wasn't really a Mario game. It's like, okay, goes back to playing Mario Brothers three and more a world. It's yeah. like, can we agree though that uh, maybe you might argue otherwise that Mario Brothers two advance like. Got the best treatment. In oh, terms they of, like, certainly cared the most the Game Boy about Advance. this one. This is my favorite version of the game. I mean, even with certain... all the even with all the screaming. Oh yeah, the lucky, lucky, <laughs> lucky, fresh from the just what I needed. Oh, remember <laughs> this? Finish a sentence, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> it's even worse when you remember this is an original Game Boy Advance launch title, which means the sound quality was shit. On oh, the also the if you're looking at the footage and being like, why is everything washed out? No, that's how the game actually looks. The original Game Boy Advance did not have a backlight, um, so everything had to be really washed out so that the colors would look like right when looking at it through the original screen. You can see this a lot in uh, the Castlevania games as well on Game oh Boy Advance because yeah. I believe oh, no, not the original one. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> not Circle of the yeah, Moon. Yeah, Circle of the Moon has really, really washed out colors because it was designed for GBA no, 1. No, 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 oh. no. Circle of the Moon did not have washed out colors. Oh, oh. It, they, they kept that shit original, which is why it's impossible to see anything. Oh, I'm thinking of You're the, thinking of Harmony, um, uh, Harmony of Dissonance. Yeah. Um, yeah so yeah. when you actually play that one on a Game Boy SP, it, the colors look all weird. Yeah, literally a flashbang <laughs> in your eyes. Oh, uh, man. But, yeah, um... The GBA, it's the the GBA is weird because I feel it, like it's, it had no it had no original Mario games on it. Yeah, but it's also strange because I feel like it's a console that's remembered fairly fondly. But the thing was only around for like three years before they moved on to the DS. Well, the remember remember how Iwata tried to say it was like, oh, the DS is our third pillar. It's like no, it's not. It's a handheld gaming device. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Yeah, especially yeah, it, when there's a Game Boy Advance slot on the goddamn thing. Yeah. The GBA, <laughs> yeah, it, it's weird. Like, the GBA wasn't around for very long as their, as their handheld headliner. But, well, there was also that, at the start, you, you have to also count that period where 
the DS wasn't doing so well and people were sticking by the GBA. Yeah, it took like so, two full years for the DS to really catch. Yeah, steam. I would say until until it took until a Pokemon game to come out for the DS. And New yeah, Super Mario Brothers to get helped as well. But like 2006 was when a uh, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl and New Super Mario Brothers came out. So it really yeah, took like okay. two full years for the thing. You know, it's it's funny. It's like we think of the DS and the 3DS as being really big successes for Nintendo, but it took them forever to actually catch on. Also, the 3DS funny. was a colossal failure until they dropped it by like a third of the price. Hey, but you could get 10 GBA games miserable, on it, not including Super I was Mario say, Advance. The, it, it had a miserable launch, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Had, like a really fucking miserable launch. What, you don't want to play Pilot Wings Resort? John? No, I'm, I'm fine. Oh boy, don't you like that f that face me app thing where you put your face on things? My, and my favorite them? was the Street Fighter game with the very with the static background. Who wants to play some Steel Diver? Who Steel wants to play Diver, Sna anybody? Who, who <laughs> wants to play Snake Eater on a tiny ass screen? I mean, to be fair, that that needed another chance. <laughs> <laughs> but like, okay, God damn it, <laughs> the GBA was at the time such a massive leap forward for handheld games. Oh yeah. Like we went straight from 8 bit to 1632 bit. 32 bit. Technically yeah. 32 bit, yeah, but you know, a lot of the games are more like 16 bit quality. Um yeah. uh I mean with, it's, li uh, it's, it's, I, I, it's library was also really great. I mean, Mario lack of original Mario games aside, you know, it had our first Attempts at Fire Emblem in the West. It had Golden Sun. It had. Uh, oh, it had everything. Yeah, yeah it had, it had RPG a really good. good with it. Yeah, it's like RPG fans got it good with the GBA. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. for sure. Um, and platformers too. For a while, like the GBA was the home for 2D platformers for those. Oh yeah, it had, it had Minish Cap too, which is also fantastic. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's. I think that's part of why it's remembered so fondly because the GBA kept a lot of genres alive. When they Aria weren't, Star was fantastic. Yeah, when they weren't being like examined on the home consoles, because Console. nobody really wanted to make a home console 2D game. They wanted to make a home console 3D uh, platformer, and RPGs were getting more uh, experimental. So people who liked classic RPGs got to play some classic style ones on the GBA. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's interesting, even though in hindsight, like the DS just completely kicks this thing out of the water. <laughs> Uh, and it also plays but, GBA games on a better screen. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, on a better screen, we should stress because until I mean, the the SP definitely changed things. And uh, funny, just a couple of days ago, I was uh, dusting out my old uh, handheld collection in my my box, and uh, Nora and I were testing out some old GBA cards that she had because we wanted to see if like the battery still worked on her copy of Leaf Green and uh, Sapphire. And I know I probably say this for every handheld circa 2001 and below but how the fuck did we actually see this screen like growing we up? didn't because that shit is what, dark. What, what you did is what you leaned against the window of your car and anytime you pass a street light at night you just played whatever you could in yeah those few you seconds. just played for like for microburst like warrior was excellent for this kind well, of scenario. oh yeah warrior was also on the gba first <laughs> you know yeah. Ooh, that was <laughs> yeah, bad. I, I'm not uh, very good at this game, for the record. Uh, but it's <laughs> it's interesting, though, because at the time, like, you know, especially when the original Game Boy was out, everybody's like, look at our at our, our backlit screen. Oh, man, Sega, Game Gear, Atari, Lynx. And it's like, people don't give a shit about seeing their games when you can only play them for half an hour. Um, is also <laughs> I was going to say, gonna say the, the Game Gear's biggest problem was just that it's battery life more than well, anything else. It, like, the battery life and the number of batteries. It needed, like, that six thing was double expensive. A's, right? Yeah, yeah, that thing was expensive to keep playing, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is assuming you just didn't have it tied to the outlet. Yeah, yeah. but then what's the point? <laughs> uh... Well, the point is I can keep playing the game. Well, uh, you know, that's what's the point is an easy question to ask in a jokey way. But you got to remember, back in the day, we didn't all have televisions in our bedrooms. Yeah, that so. I mean, that is also true. Um, I also so, say know. that somewhat cheekily. Because like the Switch also has like a two hour battery life and that's supposed to be a portable. Depending on the thing. game. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's also a matter of remember most people did not have Sega Master Systems. And, you know, I'll give the Switch, I'll give the Switch at least a little bit of credit. Like the Switch has better battery life than the, than the Game Gear, but it's, it's not just about the number of hours. The Switch can also be charged easily. Like you, you, you carry a, a dinky little two inch USB cable with you. 
and you can plug it in at the train station for half an hour while you're waiting for your train. I you think know? that's more of a thing that's common nowadays, though, because people expect outlets to charge their phones. So yeah, that yeah. wasn't. I don't think that there were nearly no. As many there there was no way to recharge a, a Game Gear. <laughs> like <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> I mean, there were rechargeable batteries, but there's also yeah. I was going to mention that the, the, those they, those didn't tend to last as long, and you needed to, like your specialized home charger for those. So, yeah. um, which probably ran a premium back then. As yes. they do now. Oh yeah, I yes. remember I having remember rechargeable batteries for my Wii motes, and this was way later than then. Um, and they were expensive and didn't even really work. So you know, uh, I mean, uh, well, I have um, I have rechargeable batteries for my Wii, Wii remotes or rechargeable battery packs specifically. Um, yeah, that's what I had. But uh, it works relatively well. But then I also didn't play my we all that often so i didn't really have uh, a chance to run them through the ringer dear you know? viewers please check your Wii remotes and see if the batteries have leaked you'll thank me later so I, I, basic, lost basic, like six Wii remotes this way <laughs> okay, basically what i do at this point is whenever i had to take my Wii out for recording or a stream or something i basically anytime i put it back up i take the batteries out <laughs> that's the smart <laughs> way yeah, to do it. that's what you should be doing yeah, yeah. um yes and if you're playing yes. Mario Galaxy, you'll have to take them out sooner or later anyway. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, it I shouldn't think, take very long. I think, like, more recently they've started manufacturing batteries in a way that where they don't leak quite as quickly or as often. Yeah, but, but um, if you still got your batteries from, like, 2013 20, uh, in there yeah, or whatever, it, they're they're. They're, they're, they're Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't do not do that. Um, oh, man, nobody ever shuts up in this game. Uh <laughs> How about some bots? Oh yeah, it's, 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 the, it's the vocal debut of Mouser. It's one of the it's one of the reasons why, even though this is in many ways a better version than the All Star support, I still if I if I'm ever it's going, also why I adamantly I know this is gonna be, it's petty. It's why I adamantly refuse to play the GBA version of Link to the Past. Yeah, Link, Link yelling all over the place. Yeah, but I mean, you hear Link yelling more because it's every time you press the B button. Like you do yeah. hear Toad go ah yeah whenever you throw shit, but you don't do that nearly yeah. as much as you swing the sword in Zelda. Yeah. So I this was the era where um, the novelty of having voices in games was still fresh enough that developers and publishers thought we always wanted to have it all the time. Yeah. Cause... And yeah, I, um, one of the things, one of the actually good things about getting older as a gamer is that uh, we're past that shit now. And um, uh, game developers and publishers realize that moments of silence can be, you know, a good thing. Silence is golden. <laughs> Movie theaters had it right for over a century. Yeah. I mean, these days, these days it's pretty common to make fun of games that where the characters are always spouting inane tutorial babble at you, like in the Ratchet reboot. But like back then, Sonic Heroes was the norm. Oh, Jesus Christ. If you, you know what? If I just, yeah, Sonic Heroes basically is the poster child for never shutting up dot game. Um, I mean, you do make a good point, though, because this game came out in 2001. And at that time, like several console games didn't even have any voice acting at all. So having these kind of voice clips, I'm sure was impressive for the time. It was definitely, uh, I, would, I would argue that starting with the PlayStation 1 is becoming more normalized because that was a big thing with yeah, a lot of games. Yeah. That, um, you know, CD, a lot of CD space and all that, yeah. CD, yeah, I mean, Metal Gear Solid, I mean, holy shit, they came above voice. But, <laughs> like, Nintendo, <laughs> you know I mean? Nintendo systems were late to the party as far as CD quality audio goes. Oh, the, so, so. Nintendo late to the party. How, I've never heard that before. <laughs> and this audio isn't CD quality. Look, like, I okay, can't understand no. anything Peach is saying. <laughs> Um, but like so in, in in cartridge based games, it was always considered really impressive when they had voice samples in a game. No matter the context, it was always considered a technical achievement. You know. Yeah. Uh, why are we playing Dig Dug? Um, because for some reason, Doki Doki Panic thinks that mashing the B button to dig through sand is fun. I don't know why. This is like one of the worst parts of the game, especially when you're playing as Peach. Who, I was going to say, you have a tendency of picking the worst characters for the worst situations. It had been a long time <laughs> since I played this game. Uh, so yeah. I didn't remember. I normally play I as like Toad. You, you were struggling so much with like the butter hands with Luigi climbing the, the chain. I didn't <laughs> know that he had butter hands. I knew he had butter feet, but, you know, I figured. Yeah, he's, he's butter everything he's, in this uh, game. He's living butter. Okay, good to know. Yeah, he's just living butter. So it, it's He's so made of butter. Weird. How did that happen? 
<laughs> it's so <laughs> weird <laughs> considering <laughs> Mario 2's place in Mario history because a lot of mainstays did in fact come from this game. And you know, technically it is a Miyamoto creation. So the design evolution is valid. Yeah, but... the, that feel when Doki Doki Panic did more for Mario than actual Mario 2 did. <laughs> yeah. Because like, um, <laughs> having replayed this game twice somewhat recently, this was actually my test playthrough for um, our Fun the Charity Room marathon earlier this summer. Um, like, I have a lot of nostalgia for this game, but it, like, it's not great, you know? Like, yeah. it's, it, it's a fine game. It's just one of those, if I'm going back to old 2D Mario, aside from Lost Levels, this is probably the last one I'm going back to. Yeah. It's weird. And, you know, you know, it's easy. It's also easy to riff on Lost Levels, but speaking of design evolution, um, like... One of the things that um, I will say, it, like, not so much in defense of Mario 2, but more like in retrospective appreciation of Mario 2, is that Mario was kind of the early platforming game, so it's understandable that Mario 2 tried to amp up the difficulty and didn't quite stick the landing in terms of what kind of difficulty people would find fun. Um... And it's important to get that wrong so that you know what wrong looks like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, failure is the greatest teacher. Yeah, it's like it, it, Mario 2, or Lost Levels Mario, just to be 100% clear, um, is basically like a ROM hack of the original. And you're right in that being like a ROM hack of the original did definitely teach them <laughs> what to do and what not to do. Um, well... <laughs> It would be more appropriate to, given the order of events, to say that ROM hacks are like Mario Two, but like um, <laughs> Mario okay, fair. Uh, Mario Two Lost Levels, whatever you want to call it, Mario Hard version, is um, it's like it's important to get it wrong in the sense that like developers, uh, all creative types really, have to experiment with ways to make something work. And difficulty curves and difficulty progression from sequel to sequel were very much um, uncharted territory for video games at that time. So there wasn't really much um, there wasn't really much to go on in terms of like existing developer theory to handle that that sort of transition. Like what what do you do when you're like one of the first direct sequels to a, a, um, a, a big focused gameplay experience in the history of video games? How do you handle that? Do you assume that every player has played the first one or what? I mean, especially when you think about it, like games just having an ending was still fairly new <laughs> around 1985. Yes. Um, um, which is strange to think about, yes. I mean, when, when you were playing something like Pac-Man, the game just like sped up every level and that was the extent of it. Um, that's that's not even, that, you, you don't even need to like really think about that kind of game design. It's just something that happens as the game lasts <laughs> and it's it's intended to eventually end the player's game. Um, until someone something... get until someone gets good enough to reach the actual level cap, and it's like, oh crap! <laughs> and yeah. then Pac-Man has a seizure. Uh... Yeah, but then that's supposed to be but then that's considered like meeting some sort of insurmountable challenge that only like two players on the planet are ever going to bother with. Yeah. So... And even then, they might have been lying about it. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it's John, like better reach... prove it. Go and clear all two hundred and fifty-six <laughs> levels of Pac-Man it's, it's and like, prove them wrong. It's like reaching level ninety-nine in Mako Reactor One. You know. And it was like, yeah. it's a badge of honor for the one person who does it. Um, also, why? <laughs> <laughs> also, why? Yes, exactly. Um, so, like, okay, so. There was an idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it, it, my, I guess my point is it's easy to riff on Lost Levels now in 2021 or even 10 years ago and in, in try 20 years ago try 20 years ago we were we were complaining <laughs> about that game back when all stars came out <laughs> well yeah it was easy it was easy to riff on it in hindsight but it was an important uh attempt to be made it had to be done by someone at some point and as, a, and as a result of that nintendo got kind of scared and made all their twos really awkward and different from their first games <laughs> All the way up you to got, like, um, like Pikmin and all sorts of other oh, stuff. Oh yeah, because you <laughs> got you, know, you even, got Zelda two, which is radically different. You got Fire Emblem two, which is radically different. 
Samus 2, uh, Metroid 2 isn't in super different, but it's still... I would say, no, uh, Metroid 2 doesn't At the very least, yeah, it's still the structure's somewhat different, but the same core idea and gameplay and controls are still the same. The concept for Metroid 2 was more like, we want a a handheld version of Metroid 1, (laughs) you know? Um, There was a different, like, mindset going into that game, and most of the structural differences in Metroid 2 can be attributed to, we need to make this work on less powerful hardware. Um... Oh, the part's over. Yes, it is. Huh. Oh, I, I guess engaging my conversation makes time fly by just fast. <laughs> For what it's worth, though, Lost Levels was considered a success when it originally came out. It was the most successful game on the disc system. I mean, yeah, but uh, they didn't. Then again, Sonic CD was also the most popular game on the CD. <laughs> uh, so, you know, just putting that out there. <laughs>